You know, I've seen placements that have generated $15 because it's on a cable show as a piece of background music and it airs to a relatively small audience. Uh, you know, it's on the Discovery Channel at midnight, mm -hmm. maybe generates $15 $15 from ASCAP or BMI who collect the money for the performance. Um, there are other things that could end up being a featured track that's two minutes long on NBC on a big hit show and make you $1,500, couple thousand dollars mm -hmm. maybe, between the license fee and the, uh, and the back end. So it's really a numbers game. It's, you can't count on the big ones. You, you should really set your sights on a bunch of little ones and play the numbers game. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to realize that you're more likely to get smaller things than you're going to get bigger things, but the big things are going to be in there too, but you have to have a mix, and this is why you need a lot of tracks and a lot of opportunities, so you can have the big things along with the small things, and one of the most important things is to remember is that a lot of small placements can add up too. Uh, you know, I made the... Uh, the first time my, my BMI check was, I think, $5,000 or more in a quarter, it was because of one little piece of music I had on a, on a little religious daytime show that I had never even heard of, most people had never heard of, but that piece was on almost every day. Uh -huh. And so it just, it, it never made more than like $3, but it just wow. was on every day sometimes multiple times a day and so it just ends up adding up and so it's important to realize that it's also important to realize for example cable television pays a lot less than broadcast television however some cable stations for example MTV they rerun their their shows to death so if you have a placement on uh, an MTV show they might show that episode 20 times in a quarter, whereas if it was on broadcast, it would get shown maybe once or twice if you get lucky and there's the rerun in the same quarter. So, so it's always important to realize that even though cable pays less, you could still get paid nice, nice money if the song is in the right, uh, right show on the right cable station. About, a, I don't know, three, four days ago, uh, you called me up and said, hey, Michael, that video that you've got on uh, your YouTube thing that shows you know, how to make a track in 30 minutes or less. And obviously, uh, I did that as a response to one of our members uh, who said, it takes me a month to do one track. And I said, come on, anybody, you know, could come home from work and do a few a night. And, and my pitch to him, my, my thesis to him was, do several a night just to get in the habit of doing it and being productive. And that if you were to do, you know, uh, I think I said to him, do a thousand tracks a year and maybe 10% of them might get picked up. Um, you felt that I, that the video gave the wrong impression, which I agreed with you on and I took it off, that it, it showed that you know low quality was, was okay. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. The point I was trying to make was this pipeline thing about being productive and doing you know a track a day, two tracks a day, three tracks a day, whatever, any spare time you've got use it to be making this music, building your catalog, and, and build up your pipeline. Um, when, when you sit down to do a track, uh, let, me, let me rephrase this, I think a lot of people have the impression that you have to have a 24-track studio, you have to have tons of equipment, you have to be multi-instrumental, uh, my theory is that there are niches that can be filled. Uh, our friend Gary Srodinski from uh, Kittery Point, Maine, got a couple of really nice juicy placements uh, in movies through Taxi with nothing more than an accordion. And so I contend, not that I'm saying this is the only way or this is what you absolutely should do, but for somebody starting out, if all you've got is an 8-track and a keyboard, um, is there stuff that you could do that could get placements? Maybe it's not, you know, the big placements. Maybe it's not a feature film. Are there simple things that you can do with a solo instrument or two instruments or three instruments on limited tracks with limited engineering skills that might get used? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can certainly do um, solo instrumentals um, are, are frequently used, um, pian solo piano. Um, uh, then you know you have to have a good piano sound it can't be cheesy because you know technology has just progressed to the level now where 
uh, you know, there's very, very good piano samples available, but however, on the other hand, they're very inexpensive too. So it might, you know, if you're smart about it, you can get a, uh, what is it like, 15 gigabyte Steinway D sample for probably $50 if you know where to buy it and if you buy it during one of their sales, you know, because there's, and those are amazing sounding and a recording, I don't think anybody will be able to tell the difference from the real thing. So the technology is available to us today to really do amazing things and uh, simple stuff does work. It has to be really well written though. It can be, I think the way I, I would really uh, approach this is the same way that you know if you write a pop song or a country song uh, or a hip-hop song or something like that and you want to get it on the radio uh, uh, something that we've all heard and publishers always hear is, is like well all this crap is on the radio and my stuff is just as good as this crap so why is my stuff not on the radio right and you have to approach it the same way with uh, film and television music library music you have to realize that uh, first of all, a lot of people who have music libraries are themselves musicians. Mm -hmm. And if this musician guy, who's probably not the, the most untalented person yet, if that guy could whip up this track in, in 30 minutes, then why would he come to you? Why would he give up his writer's share if he could just write, you know, do these tracks himself? So you have to give him something that has a value to him. You have to give him something that he could not do quickly. This could be a style that's a little strange or out of the ordinary. It could be that you have the really killer piano sample that he doesn't have. It could be that you that you um, have a specific niche covered that he doesn't have covered. Or it could be that it's something that's simply out of his reach, like it could be a big orchestra, uh, orchestral piece that he just really doesn't have the know-how to put together. So it's important to realize, to look at like, what I'm talking about here is not so much the use, the eventual use, but I'm talking about making that connection with the music library. That song that you submit to Taxi, where you want to give this music library a reason to call you and pick you over all the other people that get forwarded. You want to give him something special. And it doesn't have to be complicated or big but it has to be special. If it's going to be a solo piano, it better be a really, really nice piece. So it might not be about your prowess as a player, you know, let, let's show this guy how many notes I can hit in a short amount of time. No, no, no. It, no, it, it could not. just be that the melody is so emotionally captivating or something, mm -hmm. or, exactly. or, me or memorable. Exactly, okay. exactly. Or it could be just interesting in some way. It could be textural even, it doesn't necessarily have to be melodic. It could be really interesting chord textures, uh, you know, a lot of acoustic guitar stuff gets used all the time. If you, if a person is a really good acoustic guitar player, they can use solo acoustic guitar. is is one of the most beloved styles of music to be used in film and television.